In a recent survey, we found out that 74% of Biotechnica members want to make a career in research. And that means Biotechnica is the largest research community in this country. And that also means that we have now a lot of responsibility to help each one of you succeed in your research career. Isn't that right? Now, to make things simple, today I have picked up a topic which will help you grow in your career. Now, at Biotechnica, we pick up topics which will not just help you grow in your career, but it will help you build a solid research career, right? And today's topic is all about growing your research career. Now, the moment I say growing your research career, what comes in your mind is a scientist. Like, okay, I'll become a scientist and I'll work in some lab or some company, maybe a government lab or maybe a private lab. These are the things which comes in our mind. But have you thought that this journey is long? And this journey can be shortened if you follow the steps which I'm going to give you today. Okay. Now, the first step which you have to follow is solid education. You know, in my bachelor's, as soon as uh, my class started, after the orientation session, I turned around and I asked my friend, what's the use of this degree? It, there's no future. That is what happens to all of us. We start thinking that there's no future, there's no scope. So, you know, that from day one, we get demotivated. We don't build a solid foundation. Right. We start thinking of when there is no scope, no future, why to invest so much of effort into this and let's not study. But after several years of interacting with researchers, seeing people who have succeeded in their career in life and seeing so many people, so many Biotechnica subscribers sitting in top notch BSL 3 and BSL 2 labs in the world, I can now proudly tell you that these steps are time tested. Okay, and the first among that, that is solid education. You have to build a solid foundation while you are in your degree, which whether it is bachelor's or master's. Now, you have to pick one particular uh, subject which you love and you are passionate about and you have to go deep into that. Okay, you have to follow the deep sh shape curve where the foundation is any one subject which you love and you want to make a career in and pick that subject and go in depth into it, go ballistic into it. And the next one is the, the top part of the T, which is having a, you know, broad knowledge of multiple subjects. Okay, so obviously your, your uh, degree will have various other subjects. Suppose you chose biochemistry to go deep into, you also have molecular biology, cell biology, or other stuff which you can have broad knowledge about, maybe bioinformatics as well. So that is the first point. Now let's jump into the second point. Now the second point is exposure. Now, while you're still in your bachelor's, while you're still in your master's, don't just sit there, okay? Get exposed. Get exposed to more people who are into research, right? And that means diverse set of people. Somebody who's a bioinformatics, some, somebody who's a physicist, somebody who's a uh, biochemist, somebody who's a cell biologist, somebody who is a virologist. Interact with as many number of researchers as you can, okay? It can be virtual, it can be real, it can be within a virtual workshop or a real workshop, uh, offline workshop, online workshop, whether it is a seminar, whether it is an uh, online get-together of some uh, researchers, whatever it is, okay? Get that exposure. The more ex you expose yourself to this kind of a community effort, you will get different research ap approaches. In fact, as many internships you can do because every internship will have a different approach to a particular problem. So you can just learn that. So, you know, when you expose yourself to diverse set of people, diverse set of minds and diverse set of situations, you learn. And that is how you grow and you can accelerate your career. Because next moment when you are doing your research, you already know, okay, how to solve this research problem because you have interacted with so many people. So start interacting, start exposing to your, yourself to so many other type of researchers. Expose yourself, reach out to any CSIR lab or a, a virology lab or a lab of your choice, maybe a university lab and uh, ask or volunteer how can you help and learn, right? So expose, that's the second point. Now the third one is building network. Now while you're exposing yourself to, you know, various people, you will realize that you have already built a network. But networking is very important. When you reach out to a person, you uh, genuinely uh, try to help them or try to take help from them and uh, volunteer to help or, you know, um, comment on their post or, um, you know, um, praise them genuinely for on their achievement and then reach out whenever they uh, are celebrating something and congratulate them uh, whenever they spoke on, in a public uh, domain uh, attend those uh, um, you know speeches and learn from it and then come back and give them um, positive feedbacks so these are the things which you can do for networking and networking is not at all a time waste it is 
very important i'll give you example in my batch of 50 students uh, in my degree three of them are today ceo one of one of me one of that is me and other two are ceo so now i have network with those two people so i can reach out to them and take help and mentorship whenever i re need so my you know classmates will be sitting at a bigger position in future so do networking with your classmates with your juniors as well as seniors you never know who will can be at what position and also network with people on linkedin as well as biotechnica whenever we are doing any workshop or internship reach out to those experts uh, meet them virtually in uh, in the in the inside these workshops and you know network with them learn from them and earn various kind of kinds of learnings which they have and that will you know further help you grow your network so that's the third third point the fourth one is technical skills now technical skills there are three parts the first is hands on of course you have to learn that the second is learning the theory and the third is learning the data interpretation part any technical skill will this this three will always be there don't just focus on hands on learn so your uh, the theory part in a solid way and also learn the data interpretation skills as well whenever you'll go for a job interview they're not going to ask you to go and uh, run hplc instead they will ask you the theory they'll ask they'll give you a sample data set and ask you to conclude and of course uh, you should know the hands on so all the three are important not just the hands on that is a mistake most people do don't do that so that's the i think uh, fourth step which you have build your technical skills whatever is the domain have a list of skills okay and if you want to know this list of skills you can let us know we'll give you the list and build on that technical skills the next one is also very interesting which many people may not like but yeah that is phd from a top institution you know whether you want to get into a government job or whether you want to grow in your private sector jobs you have to get a phd and phd from top notch institutions whether it is india or abroad is equally good for example iic or iits if you are doing your phd and then when you go back to industry your starting salary will be higher and your progress will be better so that is one point you should know and for that you should qualify csir net or gate and if you want to take help of biotechnica we are already there in this domain for past 17 years we can help you in your preparation for csir net gate or any other entrance exams however even if you don't want to pursue your phd it's not that you cannot grow in your career but then it will not be a research career it will be a some other career okay so if you want to grow in your research career if you want to accelerate your research career phd is one such good thing now one last point which i want to make which is very important if you want to accelerate your career is you have to know this that today what you're doing will be outdated in the, the next 10 years for example in 1990 the discovery of dna and all the components and how dna replication occurs and all that you know was a big thing but today it's a child's play the same way uh, 30 years from today crispr will be a child's play anybody could would be able to do it in a lab so the idea here is industry is evolving research is evolving so you have to cross skill upskill reskill keep learning newer things invest in your brain because what sits in here is never impacted by inflation recession and keeps giving you return lifelong right so this investment into the brain which you do by reskilling upskilling and cross skilling this will not be ever impacted by infl inf inflation or uh, recession or um, it will and it will keep giving you lifelong returns so this is all about today's session where we wanted to talk about grow your career accelerate your career in, re in research if you have more ideas or if you have any specific questions feel free to ask us in the comment section below and i'll help you out and remember to subscribe to biotechnica where all things research happens thank you so much for watching this video see you soon in the next one till then take care bye bye